everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So um, today we are going to do a little update um, on a channel before I move on to this um, lovely sliding wardrobe I have in the background here. So um, in February when the weather hopefully picks up I'm going to do a video on my Aperture. Um, the title of the video will be World's Largest Aperture. Um, please look out for it, it's a really interesting project. Um, a lot of time getting it working. So um, now I'm going to move on to this um, little wardrobe in the background. Well, I should say big wardrobe. Um, this is a wardrobe I started designing, I think it was about December the 1st, you know, maybe the end of November. So um, my girlfriend wanted to buy a wardrobe, well, like a £600 wardrobe. But the problems with these wardrobes is they're quite cheap and, well, they usually come damaged too. Chip wood and stuff. And well, I decided to build her one and I thought I would design it first. So what I've done is I modelled the wardrobe, well, I modelled her bedroom, the corner of her bedroom on SolidWorks. Then I uh, designed the wardrobe and put the wardrobe into the part of her bedroom and the model. So um, you can see in the background here, the, the wardrobe looks absolutely beautiful and um, Donna loves it herself and I'm glad she does. She really deserves it and um, well just let me open this door here. So we have three doors. We have lovely lights um, in the background. We have 18 panels of glass or sorry mirror glass. Um, this glass is purchased from Orchard Glass in Sturban. So thank you very much um, for supplying that. Um, great service. Um, next step is Doing a full walk around on the wardrobe and the inside, outside and up close. So we have three doors, right? So go on to detail first. We have three doors. Um, the wardrobe is what do you call it? Has a full surround around the outside. So sliding wardrobes usually are from the roof to the ground. This wardrobe, ha wardrobe has a step of about well, I think it's. 170 mm or something at the bottom and the top. So the reason this is like that, so I haven't used MDF doors or chip wood doors. These doors are solid pine doors. Um, you will see in the images at the end of the video the preparation went into them. So I have routered doors. Um, I've removed 60 mm off them first by cutting them. I've routered them to leave them pure um, dead straight. Um, these edges. So basically before I put the the nice radius curve on them. I have cleaned them with the router at the two sides of each door. The doors are still approximately two meters tall. Um, they are all on lovely roller bearn tracking system. We have also have an aluminium protect uh, sorry protector strip at the bottom of the door so you can stand up and use this um, surround as a step if you need to reach up higher in the wardrobe. Um, really well thought out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the camera up close and do a full walk around. I'm going to start from the left and then I'm going to move to the right. Before that, I'm going to do open the doors and just show you. So we have the middle here. Push the middle door over and the right door obviously. So we have the middle here. So these are like pigeon uh, shelves. So you can store, you know, trousers, anything like that needs folded up and placed in here. Um, you have one, two, three, four, five, and we have a storage at the bottom too, as you can see here. You'll see it close up in a wee minute. This can be used for shoes and stuff like that. We also have a big massive storage space at the top here. You can see with the red light illuminated at the, at the background. So we have a storage space at the top. You can use that for duvet quilts, tiles, anything like that. Um, what do you see now, the right hand side? So move the middle door over. Push it over to the middle, or you can push it over to the left, it doesn't matter. Then you come on to the right hand side, so this could be used for, obviously, for, I have a nice stainless steel rail in here. This is, um, can hold a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot, a lot of coats, shirts, anything, uh, trousers and all. We also have more space at the bottom for um, shoes and stuff like that, and we have more space at the top. So there's one continuous shelf at the top. And the left hand side is just like a mirror um, reflection off the right. So what I'm going to do here now is going to bring the camera up close and do a full walk around. I hope he's enjoying. Okay. 
Okay, so um, before I move on to the wardrobe, we have um, four shelves that were also um, created around the same time that the wardrobe was built. So these um, shelves are, well they look like they're floating. We have a small one, a big one, a small one and a big one. Sort of, you know, adds a nice feature there rather than having them all the same size. They're very futuristic looking. Um, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to move on to the wardrobe. Okay everyone, so we're going to start here with the surround at the bottom. So I want to briefly touch on that in the introduction. So this surround um, is there because these doors is maximum 2 meters. So I haven't cut anything off these doors. So these doors is panel doors that are used in a house. Um, they are solid pine. They were donated to me, well given to me by a friendly neighbour. Um, there was seven of them or something, but I've used three here, as you can see. So this surround at the bottom here. So this surround is um, obviously plum. So the floor is there's a fall on the floor of about twenty mil or maybe more twenty five mil from this this wall to this point, which is two points of a meters. Um, so that had to be all matched in. So. Basically, that the doors were sitting. So if there, if I ram with the floor there, or or sort of run the gate with the floor, if you understand what I'm trying to say here. So if I was, this board was 170 high here and 170 high here, then doors would have fell, would have rolled, kept on rolling. So I had to compensate there for that, and I also had to compensate this surrounding this wall because it's in and out a wee bit. As you'd expect in these um, houses. So um, the roof also has a fall in the middle. Um, hopefully that camera's not turned, it is going blurry a wee bit there. So hopefully it comes back to itself. Um, there you go. So um, I don't know why it does that, but it does it sometimes. So we're going to start now with the inside of the wardrobe here. So I'll open the blinds actually. See if it helps a little. Um, okay, so we have these uh, limited lights that are reflecting into the background. So we don't see the LEDs at all. Um, they're all tucked into the back of the surround, this chunky surround. So this wardrobe looks quite chunky as you can probably tell there. So we have 100 mil deep here and you have the 40 mil deep doors. These doors are used obviously as I mentioned there because they were given to me but also they're much more rigid than MDF or anything like that or even chipwood, using chipwood for doors. So the surround there is is used to, well, allow me to use these doors. So the doors is not going to reach from the floor to the top of the roof. So the, the sort of the surround's doing two things here. It's compensating for the uneven floor or unlevel floor, and it is also allowing for me to use these doors. So um see the images at the end of how I prepped these doors and how I cut them and routed them, there's lots of images. These glass panes fit in exactly pure tight. Um, them glass panes also has a nice uh, chamfered edge on them, so they are polished at the edges and but chamfered and then polished, put through a proper uh, machine. At Orchard Glass, um, really, really um, precise machine, really neat and quite a fit, efficient machine too. Um, so 18 panes of glass, six to each door. Um, I've used three door system rather than a two door system because, well, because of the width of the doors. Um, you're not going to get tall pine doors over that length unless they're specially made for you. So, um, starting with the inside of the wardrobe here now. So we have this reel, this compartment for all the hangers. You could probably hang, um, I don't know, 50 pieces of clothes from there to there, I'd say, or if not more. Um, it's a metre distance and a metre to side. So anything you see on this left hand side is identical to the right hand side. Um, as if um, it's reflected onto the lower side if you drew a line down the middle of the wardrobe. So um, we have this lower shelf that you can also store, I don't know, items of clothes. There's lots of storage. You have the big massive storage area up the top. Let me see if I come in here. Hopefully the camera doesn't go blurry. I think it's going blurry because of the lights. Um, we have the left hand side and we have right over to the right hand side. So um, that's really it. So the bottom shelf here can be used for shoes, anything like that. 
Um, you can even put shoes on this shelf, I'm not sure what Donna's going to do, but they have this lovely um, trim around the wall too that sort of blends the wardrobe into the back, uh, back wall. So I should probably point out here too, this wardrobe does not, um, them lights are affecting that camera, so this um, wardrobe doesn't have any back end panel on it, so I've prepped the wall before I bought the wardrobe. So what I mean by prepped, I have um, painted it the same colour as the bedroom walls. I have filled any wee, um, wee holes and removed any bumps and well, when I was doing up this wall I had it in mind that a wardrobe was going to be there. Not, well, I didn't think it was going to look like this but um, well, that's it. So we're moving on to the middle here now. So we have Pigeon holes as I call them, one, two, three, four, and five. The bottom, probably more likely used for shoes. Um, they're massive, they are, well my arm's quite long and they're deeper than my arm. They're 550ml away I think. I think it's 550 or 650. Um, as I say on the left hand side here, the cloak room or whatever you want to call it, the hangers go as a metre wide. And so what I was just demonstrate these doors rolling here, so they're nice and free. There's stops at the bottom, so this door will fall into its stop. There you go. The middle door stop is there. Um, this is the runner runner number one, or slide, slide number one, or slide number two. So this one at the back, this guide, is for the back door only. Um, you can see how, how free it runs. So if there was a fall on that floor, them doors wouldn't stop right to the left hand side because the bearings are so free. Um, I'm going into detail here but I may as well. So um, as I say, the right hand side of the wardrobe now. I want to just go on here low. So they have the lovely piece of skirting board. The, the lights is messing with the camera again. Um, we have the four pigeonholes, one, two, three, four, they're massive. So they can be used for all the stuff that's going to be folded up. So this is the right hand side, now anything you've seen on the left hand side, you've seen here, only there's the lights doing it like here. I'm going to just hold the camera away here wait a minute. I don't know why the lights are doing it, I might turn the lights off wait a minute. So basically if you're using this remote, I can change the colours. So I'll just keep them off eye because they are affecting the camera. It's not even the lights that's doing it, I think it's because the camera doesn't like being indoors to be honest. That's more used to being outside. So I'll just turn them on again, I'll turn the white on. So you can see, see if I get them on again now, try to push them on, so you have all these different settings on the lights, looks really pretty in the dark, um, or even now in the daylight. So we have a meter stainless steel pole at this side too, and that's it, so the door will fall into its stop. Um, we have this lovely aluminium reel at the bottom, so you don't damage the chip loop when you're standing on the edge of the wardrobe, if you need to do this. Um, that's it, finished. So that's the wire open. when the middle's opened. When you want to open the right, you just keep the middle where it is, or push it away where the left, doesn't matter. Um, I need to tidy up these cables yet, in here. And that's it, finished. I think I've talked about everything. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. Uh, you can move these doors by touching the glass, or touching the back of the door here. There's a very very small gap between the two doors to allow for the runner. I want to go down and demonstrate that. So you can see there, the, or sorry, the bairn, the, the poly wheels. There's the inside one. And there's the one on the other door. So this is the stop. And this is the poly wheel. Um, there's wee bairns in them, they're quite good. So them runners and this wheel was approximately £90. Over 2 meter length for, for a free door system. Um, everything else you see here is all um, cut with a saw, a big circular saw. Chip wood is very hard to not chip um, the two sides. So the good side is to the side that you're looking at here. Um, I'm going to go into the shelves. Well, to be honest, the two sides turned out very well. Um, there's the, let me see if the camera focuses again. It's going to, so there's the underside of it. And it's quite good too, really neat. So that's it finished everyone, um, I hope you've enjoyed, um, again these shelves blend in with the wardrobe, these floating shelves, and well, 
I think I've talked about everything there now. So what I'm going to do here now is going to give a wee final, um, well, wrap this video up. Okay everyone, so what I turn the light on here. So, um, to wrap this video up, I am going to turn the lights off in two seconds. And just show the wardrobe, um, sort of, in darkness. I've closed the blinds here on the left. Um, so, to wrap this video up, I'd just like to say, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. In February, I will have the video of the aperture, I hope, if the weather picks up. I always, um, well, I like doing videos outside when it's sunny, but this country is terrible. So, um, final wee demonstration here now of the doors in darkness. So, turn the lights off here for seconds. So, it's quite dark now, so the sun sort of went down outside, or behind a cloud. So, I have the wrong door there, so I know. So, that door there belongs in the middle, the one at the back. The, it really depends on, well, they're, they're matched the way they are at the minute. So, the door at the back is the door I use for the middle. You could also um, switch them around if you want to. Like, you can put that door there, put that door in the middle. But you wouldn't really want to do that if you have OCD with me, you want the two outside doors to be left and right. So, that's it. Everyone, I hope you might be able to see the light through the, the gap there. Um, there you can sort of see it. It's quite nice in the dark. So, we final demonstration here of, you have these lovely, um, what do you say? You have this thing can move to music, so what do you say? I'll demonstrate this. I'm not obviously going to put music on because of my copyright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing a song, right? Hold on. Now I'm going to joke it, I'm not, but I'm going to do this. Bum, 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 bum. The fucking margarine goes with the music. Incredible. <laughs> right, everyone. Stop crying all night. I hope you enjoyed the video, um, take care and I'll see you on the other side, bye bye. Okay, so um, additional design now. So starting with 3D modeling, so before I started cutting anything or taking any dimensions, um, what I done is I created a 3D model. So the 3D model consists of two parts, so one part being the wall and the floor and the other part being the wardrobe built in, into the part of the wall, if that makes sense. So the dark grey is the wall and the white areas that you can see there, um, cream on the screen but white are the wardrobe. So um, I removed the doors there just to show the internal part of the wardrobe. So what I'll do here now is I'll move the wall. Okay, so you can see um, the wooden frame here, the wooden structure of the entire wardrobe from top to bottom. Um, you can see the structure at the sides and then two studs at the top there. So um, it was important for this um, wardrobe to be strong top and bottom because the doors actually weighed approximately 45 to 50 kg each when the glass mirror was in them. Okay, so placing the doors back into position here now and the wall, um, you can see the model um, was quite useful for determining all sizes. Um, the length of the runners required, the length of the stainless poles, the length of the shelves, everything. So everything was cut to size, um, then assembled um, inside the wall. Um, you can see there the, actually the lower panel being spaced off the ground. Um, also, so we're not exactly using the floor itself. So the white panel is um, at the very bottom of the wardrobe too. So that's it. Um, the middle door there just um, hasn't got any limits in it, but the other two doors do. So moving on now to additional design and the building. So extra images and video clips. Okay, so as soon as the video starting with the wee shelves, the wee floating shelves. So this is me, building the frames, uh, attaching them to the wall, using masonry plugs, the wall plugs. Uh, so the four um, frame or brackets, you could say, were done first. Then the panels or the tops um, cut into triangles to match the walls, of course. 
because the walls is not exactly um, level or straight or square. Um, so here I'm just uh, using the wardrobe uh, basically to hold the wee shelves until the glue has hardened. So this is one of the smaller I think, shelves um, glued. This is them finished. So you can see here they look um, quite well. Um, one being smaller in the middle and one being smaller at the bottom. So this is the beginning of the wardrobe design. So first things first, I needed to determine what uh, poly system, tracking system, um, the wheels I was going to use for the doors and how many doors I was going to use of course. So at this stage it was important to um, remove the floor because you don't want the floor going below the wardrobe in case the floor needed to be replaced in the future. So um, it was important this was done uh, nice and neat because um, no skirting board was being attached to the lower end of that wardrobe as it's much better looking without it. Okay so this is where the studded frame um, started to take place. So um, the reason there's so many studs or supports in here was to allow, um, well, to allow the person to stand on that edge that I demoed in the video. So the stronger this was, um, the less likely the doors were going to fall out of the runners in the future. Okay, so at this point um, I was starting to attach the surrounding panels. Um, so the wardrobe was starting to take shape at this point. So this was done using um, various screw sizes and then um, modesty blocks and also um, Gorilla glue, wood glue. Here you can see the panel being screwed to the left hand side of the wardrobe and glued and then the right hand side. So um, these modesty blocks were used to um, hide screws um, rather than screwing into the face of the panels themselves. Okay so at this point the screws could be hidden behind the rails. Um, the sliding rails for the doors and also at this point you can see the grip fill used to attach that lower aluminium rail as a protector. So finally moving on now to the panels themselves. So the panels were cut using this circular saw. This was quite a tricky process um, to eliminate chipping um, to the edges, both edges. So I wanted, really wanted two good edges, but it was hard because of um, the type of saw I was using. So the saw used for this um, is a special saw with two spinning blades, I believe. So this is me building the, or attaching the modesty blocks to the upright, one of the uprights and then the right upright. So these then are screwed together to give you the pigeonholes. And basically this entire unit is the support for the top shelf. Um, to keep it from sagging down. So everything at this point could have been screwed together. Um, these uh, little sort of little supports in the background here were also painted white um, at the stages the doors were painted. So at this point I was basically setting everything um, level and plumb and making sure everything was okay. So just a sample of the hanger on the stainless rail. Um, the unit um, glued and all screwed together using um, them modesty blocks again. Um, quite handy wee things. So final images here um, before we move on to the doors. So this is the wardrobe um, internally being finished apart from two lower shelves that you can see in the model there. Um, are missing from the real life model so what I had to do here is cut um, two more panels, two more shelves. This is done using a circular saw and obviously one person, one man band, it was done with a ratchet strap and a guy. So this is the final um, wardrobe, the internal part of the wardrobe finished, the whole surround. Now moving on to the doors. So you can see the full um, size of the door there uh, that's trimmed at this point using the circle saw and now I'm using that aluminium guide um, and also router down the side of the door. So basically what I'm doing is planing the door using the router to assure it's nice and straight um, the whole way down. At this point I'm leaving a nice 10mm radius um, curve on the four edges of the door. 
Make sure you remove that sharp, hard, um, 90 degree or perpendicular edge. So not far to go now. So um, after this, the doors need to be, well that's the leftovers of the doors. You can see where the handles used to be on, the panel doors for the house. This is the three doors finished completely, exact same size. They are also um, tidied up with the router top to bottom. This is the doors placed on, trialed, before I started painting them. This is me spraying them in the garage, undercoated. And then I could see wee defects, so I filled the defects, um, no matter what size they were. And you can see my heater in the background there, the custom heater I bought. Uh, unbelievable heater for drying and heating the garage. So as I say, at this stage I noted more wee imperfections in the door, so I filled them using um, a wee uh, wood filler. Well, basically it was car fillers, car bodywork fillers. Um, then I give them a wee prime again before the final coat. So obviously they needed sand at first. Um, that's it. So you can see the level of detail I went through there before I even applied the glass. So this is all the wee supports for the back of the shelves that were screwed into the existing uh, studs in the wall. These studs were um, found using a magnet um, on the nails. Um, this is me attaching, well, sampling the mirror and the door. It looked quite pretty at this stage. And then ready for the glass to be applied to all the three doors. So here we have the glass from Archer Glass, the mirror glass. Um, cut to size, right down to the last mill. Um, so basically there's about a half a mill gap right round the glass that it sits into the recess of the doors. Uh, looks quite well, even I think it looks much better than having full um, well, the doors covered in entire glass. Sort of breaks it up a wee bit. So the glass is attached using grip fill. Um, just at certain spots, and then when the doors hardened, or the glass gripful hardened, and the panes were set into position, a wee, uh, a wee uh, small uh, run of painter's mate was placed right around the glass and the door, um, the perimeter of the glass even, the mirror glass. So this is the door finished, just before I applied the painter's mate and they look quite well. So there's the painter's mate uh, applied. It just fills the wee gap. The gap's not big. At this point the door's still drying off. You can see it's wet there. Okay, so the wardrobe is completely finished at this stage. We had it to be cleaned. Um, the mirror glass needed to be well polished before I started videoing. So that's it everyone, I hope you enjoyed um, this video and this little project. I hope Donna enjoys it for however long she has it. And I'll see you again um, with more interesting projects in the future. Bye everyone!